Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel and what I have here for you today is the Brother 1602. If I had to describe this knife in just a couple of words, it would be large balls, bearings, <laughs> flipper, and wave. So full disclosure, GearBest did send me this for review. It will not influence my review in any way. I'm going to give you the good and the bad. Right now, GearBest has this in stock, and you can get it for $19.48. I provided the link in the description box below. So the first word I used to describe this knife was large, and I believe it's large. I have pretty large hands, and you can see how that looks. Very large. As a matter of fact, let me fold this up. The handle is 5 inches long, so that's what it is folded, 5 inches. And you can see it has some nice stainless steel bolsters. It has some really nice ebony wood, I guess. It's ebony, or it's just wood stain, almost black, but that is wood. So if you like having a large... Uh, piece of wood in your hand <laughs> it's uh this is the knife for you you can see it has some nice contours to it although it's smooth but um really nice shape let me just open this up it it has a shape that helps you purchase that knife it has a lot of things to keep your hand from slipping down on the blade when stabbing because you have this guard here that starts out as a flipper and then it rotates down and becomes the guard as you can see right there and you have some jibbing up here on the wave, and I'll demonstrate that here if you don't know what that is. But that all keeps your hand from sliding onto the blade. And then if you're pulling back, like let's say you get done stabbing something and you need to pull back, you can see you have a little bit back here to help grab to pull that knife out. So really nice. I like the wood. The finish is not perfect. It's kind of a diamond in the rough right there. You can see a little bit uneven um, coating done on there you could fix it up easy or hey if you're going to use this knife who cares it's 20 bucks but really nice now you can see it has a lanyard hole there's a steel liner in there you have a nice clip that clip can't be moved that's uh right handed tip up only so if that's an issue for you you can leave right now torque screw construction open pillow designs stainless steel lighters they are not skeletonized so it does weigh quite a bit it's 6.25 ounces that's six and a quarter ounces for those of you like fractions you also have a torque screw for your pivot so you could adjust it no weird hardware there just standard torx screw construction next let's talk about the business end of this blade the blade it's uh 440c stainless steel so it's a very good american stainless steel and it is a full flat grind and this can be considered a buoy or a clip point whatever you want pretty thick pretty long as a matter of fact it is three and a half inches give or take depends on exactly where you measure it you could uh when you when you go to the link at gear best they give you all the exacting dimensions depending on how you want to look at it uh just a nice long fine edge we'll run some tests on there make sure it's sharp you can see they sort of have a half and half choil here so if you want to choke up on that blade you can but if you have a really big fat sausage finger that might not be quite big enough for you but my my noodley fingers there seems to work okay but you could still do your fine work no matter what pretty neat you're really limited in the how many ways you could hold this i mean you could choke up you could hold it with the standard i guess saber grip or whatever you want to call it or like that but your reverse grip because of the shape of the handle right here, it's not the most comfortable thing. It's going to jab you in the thumb right there. So you might have to pull the knife down in your hand and hold it like that. Or just rely on this area here. But not ideal for a reverse grip. So there's one weakness and one con right there. Let's talk about deployment of this knife. There are three ways you could deploy this knife, which is pretty cool. You have the standard method. Or the most standard method, which is thumb studs. And you see you have ambidextrous thumb studs. And they're kind of unique looking. You're not your standard uh, step pyramid type. They're sort of uh, like a barbell, lack of a better term. And look how that flies open. Well, you can see what I mean by barbell or, or ball. Or I don't know. But kind of neat. 
And by the way, it's a liner lock. You can see it lock up is perfect, fully behind the blade with a lot of room to wear. But a liner lock. So getting back to deployment, you have your ambidextrous thumb studs. You have your flipper. And let me tell you, this thing flies out like an automatic, and there's a reason why. And it's because this knife got balls. And I'll, I'll show you that here in a moment. And the third way of deploying this knife is the Wave. For those of you who are familiar with the Wave, Emerson sort of created that wonderful world of Wave knives. But I'm going to go ahead and put this into a pocket. And it has to be the correct pocket to demonstrate this. So let's, uh, there we go. Get my pants on. <laughs> All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and put this in the pants. Actually, I'm going to move the camera here just a bit. So I apologize for that. So here you are. If you're right-handed, it's going to be in your right pocket, ideally. That's how it's going to ride in your pocket. You can see it does stick out quite a bit. Now, how does the wave work? Well, the wave helps you deploy that knife while pulling the knife out of your pocket and what happens is as you pull it that this piece right here catches the edge of your pocket and it starts to deploy it see that so that's how it works so when you pull it out you just I'm gonna be careful not to to cut myself here you want to pull it out and back and you just sort of go I really don't want to get cut here on camera like that I gotta do a little bit faster it's a lot easier to do it when it, when it's on your body, but I don't have pants on right now. There we go. See that? Pretty neat. So anyway, why is this knife so smooth? Because man, it's just buttery smooth, and it's not because it's loose or it's bad or anything. It's because this knife has ball bearings, and that might be a little hard to see here. Um, I could try. Maybe you could see it has uh, balls in there. You could try to see that. But you can see it has a sleeve with ball bearings on both sides of the blade right there. And uh, that's what makes this so smooth. It is, I mean, you would swear this was an automatic knife. I mean, I'm barely putting any pressure on this flipper at all. And if you do put pressure, it's faster than an automatic or a uh, assisted opening could probably be a better term but absolutely amazing so let's uh, test out a couple of things you could see that the alignment of the blade is slightly to your left but it's not rubbing in any way so it's no issue and you might be able to adjust that out if you play with the pivots but I'm not gonna mess around with it I want to give you the out-of-box experience retention is how well the blade is held in and you can see it has a nice tactile click and that's because the liner down here you can see there's a retention ball and that goes into a hole that's in the blade and you could actually see the liner give you some knife lessons here you can see that liner lock move inward when it when it sort of locks in the place so retention which is a good thing because this is a big knife um, holds really good so retention is very good deployment smooth fast no up and down, no side to side. And again, I showed you that lock up is right where you want it, where the locking mechanism is all the way behind the blade with a lot of room to wear. So that's exactly where you want it. Got some paper. You know what that means? It's paper cutting time. That's push cutting, my friend. Look at that. I'm, I'm pretty impressed there. I'm a hairy guy. I'm a hairy guy. We could do something about that. Um, is it shaving? Well, it's actually not a good shaver. <laughs> I mean, it's taking off some hair. It's taking off a lot of skin. So what that tells me, usually when this happens, where it cuts paper really good and doesn't shave real good, is that it has micro serrations in the blade, which is a good thing unless you're planning on shaving with it um, it's hard to tell I mean it but that's probably what's going on next thing get some cardboard we could uh, test it out make sure we're cutting good different types of material I don't do this enough 
but you can see no problem there. Uh, I'm almost push cutting through the cardboard, so that's pretty amazing too. We can, uh, I usually don't do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. Like sort of do some uh, feathering just to show you that that could be done. Probably not, I'm not a professional at this. I'm not an outdoorsman, I just claim to be. <laughs> but you can see, it's doing, this is not the kind of wood you would do this anyway with. But, there we go. You do your feather sticks. There we go. Look at that, like a pro. Don't tell anyone that I don't do this professionally. I'm a knife reviewer that's urban cowboy. Alright, so you can see. Does a real good job. You do your feather sticks, make some good kindle in, start some fires, bits like that. And it's a good thing. This is classified as a hunter folder, so you can take it out hunting, camping, things like that. All right, here's the controversial part of my videos. I get a lot of flack from. I don't care. I stab a piece of wood, and I sort of rock this back and forth a little bit. This is something you don't do with your knives. But um, I want to make sure that it's heat treated properly, and the point could stand up to a little bit. Of pecking and farging. I'm not like, you know, this is soft pine. You know what I mean? It's not a, any kind of hardwood. Let me go this way a little bit. Every once in a while I stab my table, and that's why I got this cutting board, which is self healing. Um, <laughs> anyway, did, did the tip hold up? Yes, sorry. Look at that point. Definitely a good stabber. That is definitely a good stabbing knife right there. One last uh, funny thing here. I'm trying to figure this out. Maybe some of you can explain this to me. On this side, okay, let me start out. But this side, it says brother. Let me, let me try to get that where you can see that my lighting really is terrible today. I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. You can see where it says brother right there and it says one knife one life underneath it you have a number here which is 1602 which is the model number you have another number on this side which I believe is the serial number mine is 289 because I've watched other reviews and their numbers are different unless it's a certain run or something like that but that number tends to change you have 440C which is the type of steel which is very good steel. It's not super steel, but it's a very good steel. And here's the the one thing I'm trying to get here. The designer. It says Wonton is the designer. And I haven't heard of a, a designer named Wonton. If any of you have heard of this name, or maybe I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, or maybe um, I'm not reading the letters properly. But you can see right there. Looks like wonton to me, but again, here's your other numbers right there. Helps if I had zoomed in earlier so you could sort of see that. We'll go ahead and just do one more quick pass here. Again, you could see the, the finish here, which is sort of a, by the way, the finish on the blade is like a brushed satin finish, so it doesn't reflect too badly. And you can see the finish here. What I was talking about, a little inconsistent. You can see where some spots it's really shiny, some it's a little bit duller. Not a big deal. I do like that the fit and finish is really good. You can see that between the wood and the bolster. Right there, nice tight fit. And again, you might be able to make out the ball bearings down in there. Maybe, maybe not. Liner lock. There you go, fit and finish. And again, you can see a little bit of the inconsistent finish on this side a little bit better. See the clip? Ah, I just stabbed my finger. <laughs> clip is nice and tight. It's not going to fall out of your pocket. I didn't stab it bad. I'm not bleeding. But very, very nice knife. I'm going to give you one of my opportunity to try to make out those bowl bearings if we can. Trying. I'm trying as best I can here. I don't know if you can see that. Bring it in closer. There we go. I think you can see just a little bit in there. See the balls? This is a male knife. It has balls. By the way, there's your blade stop right there. Just so you can see the size of that. Go ahead and lock it. 
nice and tight. By the way, jimping, nice and functional. Grabs your finger right there, see that? So that's not ornamental. <laughs> that is actual functioning jimping. If you're not going to make it function, don't put it on it. So there it is, the Brother 1602. Very impressive knife for the price, under $20, by the way. If you do order this, it comes in a cardboard box and nothing fancy, nothing fancy. Here, there's the Brother logo going on. Very nice knife. Definitely worth 20 bucks. Uh, if you're looking for something that has balls as a male, is a large knife, EDC liner lock with some wood. This is definitely your knife. And again, the only con that I have found with this knife is that the blade centering is slightly off. However, it's not rubbing. And reverse grip is not comfortable at all. Nice hot spot right there. So if you come down on something really hard, you're going to feel it on your thumb really bad. So just be aware of that. All right. Link is in the description box below, $19.48, if I have that still here, my cut test, yep, I remembered something, yeah. Alright, well thank you very much for joining me here at the Gear Obsession channel, I really do appreciate every friend, viewer, subscriber, and especially you, and I hope you have a great day or evening, wherever you are, take care.